Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Incubator Podcast at the CHNC Symposium. We are joined by Dr. Sharada Gauda from Texas Children's Hospital. Sharada, how are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you? Good. And we're joined by uh, Dr. Karina Lawrence from uh, the Children's Hospital of Colorado. Karina, nice to meet you and uh, welcome to the show. I think it's your first time. It is. Yeah. A lot of the people here are now returned customers. Oh, it's easier to come a second time. For sure. Anyways, to make that initial jump to get the oh, first gosh, time. Yes. So thank you for joining. <laughs> sure. And um, so we're going to talk about the POCUS focus group. Uh, which is kind of difficult to say, no. the Pocus, 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 Pocus Group. Pocus, Pocus group. Um, got it. But um, this is very exciting. It's a, it's, a, it's a field that has a lot of interest, a lot of attention. And so I'm just curious about what are you guys doing with this uh, opportunity to lead and co-lead uh, such an important part of the CHNC sort of uh, investigative work? I'll go first. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, well, Everybody will get a turn, so... Only reason is because I actually want to showcase what Karina is doing. So that's why I'm going to go first. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> Karina is really... Uh, so Neonatal focus, focus Group started as an offshoot of the National Focus Collaborative. And that's where Karina and um, all the other... Uh, Marky Fraga, Ashazi Bambal, um, many, many, many folks yeah. um, come from. So it was an offshoot of that because we realized there's a lot of uh, that, a huge data set that we can actually um, collect and collaborate here because it is more personable. We meet a lot more in person. We actually can share ideas, exchange um, all our, um, uh, not just the research. So this is, uh, we are also, Jason um, Stoller, um, um, Jenny Shepard and I also co-lead the research group mm -hmm. at the National Focus Collaborative. And we kind of try to combine the CHND focus focus groups ideas with the larger That's national great. that are not part of the sure. CNC. So that seems like an okay. overwhelming task. Yeah, it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so unique. I think a lot of focus groups. Uh, worldwide are really focused right now on education, right? How do we get people to hold a probe or to even recognize the value? Um, but in parallel, you guys are really saying, I mean, some of us are already doing this and we're doing it well. So how can we study the work that we're doing? So tell us about some of those initiatives. I think what's, and just to kind of go back a little bit to the, the foundation of the CH, CHNC Focus Focus yeah. Group and um, the NPC collaboration, I think this was the right time to do it, yeah. right? Because there's been such a boom in yeah, focus. For, so making sure that we have a foundation for how we're going to collect the data, yeah. how we're going to study what we want to study, and to have a multidisciplinary um multi collaboration about it so that we're all measuring the same thing sure right so that we can make what we study meaningful across centers so it was the right time to do it and i'm that yeah i'm glad i'm glad the it's, it's absolutely yeah it's just grown so That's much awesome. well tell us about some of the priorities then for the group i think we started with the hemodynamics as a major um priority in terms of okay we want to make sure the right uh, vasoactive medication is used in scenarios. I mean, as you know, all neonatologists, we jump to either volume or dopamine. Yeah. And is that the right medication to use? Is that the right um, thing to just jump start to? Or are there other um, tools in our um, toolkit to utilize before? So right. tomorrow there's a workshop in the yes, afternoon that, that we will uh, be kind of expanding. Uh, in the morning, it's going to be um, Karina's focus focus group uh, workshop and then in the afternoon it's going to be the hemodynamic aspects of it. Okay. So starting with that, then we said, okay, we can do it, but how do you disseminate this, right? Because it's important to also let others know, hey, there are more than one way to treat a shock. Um, and then, but then are we all measuring shock the same way? Right. Are we all measuring the function the same way? And are we going to be able to educate them? So that's where Karina's um, uh, expertise comes in, the educational aspect of that. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. 
Um, so our workshop tomorrow in the morning is going to be focused a little bit more on data-driven programmatic innovation. Right. And so it's going to set the foundation for a lot of what Sharda was talking about in terms of how you're going to collect your data. Mm -hmm. And with ultrasound, it's so interesting because it's not just numbers. It's not just um, thing. It's not. It's not just the the vital signs or anything like that on on your patient. It's also the images along yeah. with the metadata that goes along with all of those images too. So how are you going to collect all of that information, and how are you going to store it in a meaningful fashion that you can actually review it for yes quality, mm -hmm. but also to collect your research data. So trying to create that foundation and also trying to um, also come together and find ways for us to collaborate in terms of multi-institutional IRBs. Wow. Right? Yeah. Um, so Quite a workshop, challenge. I know, right? <laughs> so our workshop in the morning is going to really focus on that, like image storage, um, quality assurance, how to establish QI research at your program. I think that's so important. That I think a lot of centers want to do it, yeah. right? They finally yeah. have a champion, but there are a lot of obstacles, red tape, you know, people are concerned about, especially what you're talking about, storage, QI, things like that. So I think when it's new, yeah, it's scary. It is. You've got to pave that path. And a lot of institutions do have those initial questions about, okay, like, okay, yes, multi-institutional, but how are we going to keep our data secure? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like a second EMR, really, because yes. there's so much information uh, stored yes. in those images. That's impressive. Yeah. And most of most of us have them on like a drive. That's right. No. Oh, I, yes. That That's actually the hardest part. <laughs> and for the hospital to be able to buy that space so that you can store it on yeah. the or whatever storage platform you want to do, it's it's a lot of data, right? It's not like just one little, okay, um, case presentation, I mean, you know, like a Yeah, it's not like a hematocrit value. That's like yeah. one value. Yeah. That's a very dynamic, right. it's a very dynamic type of data. Right. And yeah. it's just like a JPEG. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> no, it's like patient name. Yeah. MR number, date of birth. It's all. Yeah. Yeah. The how, how do you deal with uh, a, a collaborative type of QI initiative where there's such an interest in POCUS that you have, I'm assuming, lots of centers that are at various phases of their growth towards expertise. And how do you make sure that everybody can sort of be heard and be a part of a meaningful POCUS collaborative? All the while, the, the, the really advanced groups are benefiting, but also the really junior ones who are just getting into it are also catching on. Uh, in I think that goes back to like the foundations of a mentor-mentee relationship. Yeah. Okay. Right? And structuring it some way like that I think brings about a very like fruitful relationship for both parties involved. That was one of the biggest asks of us at our previous CHNC and PAS um, uh, workshop sessions was how, how do we how do we move forward with this? We need help with image review. We need help with building our programs, and that's what really sparked yeah. these different workshops that we're now building for like program building for research building. Yeah, there's. And there's a lot of foundational work in what you guys are describing, right? I mean, I I often give the example of like you're building the highways. It's it may not be the prettiest QI initiative, but it is the most useful and something that will last for years because if you have a system in place, then you're going to be able to do so much more. But right. th this is this you're doing the hard work right now. And that's yeah. exactly what the the POCUS collaborative, the like neonatal POCUS collaborative is, right? We're building on those highways, not just for education, but for credentialing. Yeah for program guidelines, again, for research, and then our communications group disseminates and helps um, essentially publicize all the work that's all being done too, so. And, and also it helps with like, people are not having to redo the whole work, it's already yeah. done. So it's in a central repository, like, okay, how did Karina's um, or like Jason's or Jenny's uh, program start? So that I, like, if, I'm a new person, okay, you know, wanting to start something in Nebraska or um, Arkansas, like we have that already ready. So they don't have to reinvent the wheel. So that's really the importance of like sharing and um, disclosure. National Focus Collaborative folks are a much larger sub, a larger cohort than the CHNC because not everybody on the NPC sure. is actually on the CHNC. But we hold our meetings alternatively. Every month there is a meeting, but you know it's alternating with the CHNC and the yeah. So they're uh, so they're not competing. No. And if anything, they're, they're integrating. They're, oh yeah. They're, they're very much integrating. And then one group 
um, gets ideas from the other group. And unfortunately, CHNC does not sh actually store the data of all the images acquired. So trying to figure out how to actually share, um, well, store the data so that you know more uh, research um, can come out of this is really something we are working on as well. And I think for anybody interested, this is kind of the really cool part of potentially being involved at an early stage. Uh, I think that the investment people always say like, oh, if you could get into Facebook at the ground floor. But it. for us, this is kind of it. Like if you could get into this type of work right now, like you would be part of the foundational work that is being done in one of the most emerging aspects of our field. And I think that's kind of neat. So thank you. Thank you to you both for thank doing you. that. And thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.